Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing my first favorites video for 2020. The car is just gonna be here with us. <laughs> These are my January and February 2020 favorites. If you're new to my channel or if you haven't seen my favorites videos in the past, I like to do them every two or three months because I only want products in here if they have been thoroughly tested and if I do really, really enjoy them. So several of these products in the past I've totally panned and rebought. Sometimes you'll see repeats of products if I'm still reaching for them because I want you guys to know the products I'm actually buying, the products I'm actually using, even if maybe they're not at the forefront of my videos. So I have five makeup products here and then I have two hair care products. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Oh, I forgot. If you want to binge watch all my favorites videos, I think I have about two years worth of them now. I'll throw the playlist up in the cards. Okay, so let's go in the order you would normally apply this. The first is a concealer that has just been so good and it's crazy affordable. So this is from AOA Studio, the Shop Miss A brand, and this is their liquid concealer. This is from the Paw Paw line, so a portion of all the sales of these Paw Paw products go to um, a charity that supports animals, which is just amazing. I love it. This is a very full coverage concealer, so if you're looking for something medium or light coverage, this is not going to be your girl. She is thick. <laughs> it is a very thick concealer. You only really need a little bit, but a little bit goes a long way and it just looks so great on my under eyes. My under eyes are very dry. I have combination skin and I do have fine lines. This looks amazing on my under eyes. This works great with a whole bunch of different foundations that I've tried it with. I have to say, I haven't tried this for like spot concealing, <laughs> knock on wood, I haven't had the need to really spot conceal recently, so I've really only used this on my under eyes, but it looks, it looks amazing on my under eyes. It's, oh, it's incredible. I picked up two shades because I wasn't exactly sure what shade would be best for me. I have the shade Fair Ivory and Porcelain. When I'm wearing a foundation that actually matches me, like today, Porcelain would be my go-to. I have some foundations that are still a bit too dark for me. I try to lighten those, but if I don't lighten those, then I can use this Fair Ivory shade. I believe this concealer is just under $2, and you get a really good size tube. How much product is in here? This is 10 mils or 0.34 ounces, and it is a squeezy tube, which I love for packaging because you can squeeze out all the product, and then you can cut it open, get everything out, and then you can recycle it. It's honestly like, I wish everything that could come in a squeezy tube came in a squeezy tube. <laughs> It's the best. It's just, it's just great. I've had this for a few months now. I actually had to purposely pull it out of my everyday makeup basket because I was just going for these constantly because they're so good and they're affordable. I did pick up two new concealers or one was sent to me in PR from Pat McGrath. Her new concealer was sent to me and then I actually picked up the uh, ColourPop Pretty Fresh Concealer which is the one I'm wearing today. I like that one but I need to test it more. I've only had it for about a week or two so that needs some more thorough testing but these so good. Next I have an uh, eye primer that I've been using quite constantly, really consistently, and it just works really well. This is the Cut Crease Canvas from Makeup Revolution. Now this comes as a caveat. <laughs> this works really great as just an all-around all eye primer. I wore it today as my eye primer. I like to put this on and then fully set it with powder before I go over with actually like my shadows and everything. But using this for a cut crease, I think the whole point is that this brush is supposed to help you do a cut crease. It doesn't really help. This brush is a bit too big for my eye shape. It picks up too much product. So if you're going for a cut crease, you're going to like splash and get, you know, this product outside the line of where you probably want your cut crease to be. But like the product itself is good. <laughs> If you use a different brush, this can definitely help you do a cut crease, but I, I like the idea of what they were going for. It's just the execution, at least for someone like me who has hooded eyes, whose eyes are really small, this just didn't work out in the way it was intended, but it's still a really good product. So I've been using this a lot to uh, set my eye primer over the past few months, and it's almost to the point where I have to pull the stopper out and start scraping it out. I, uh, did I finish it? I think I had another one of these in a shade that was closer to my skin tone. This is just a white shade. And I went through that pretty quickly because it also was just a really good eye primer. So I would recommend this if you're looking for a good affordable eye primer that'll go a long way because I've been using this for months and I still have it. But uh, I would just say be careful when you're trying to use like this brush specifically for a cut crease because I think it's just, it doesn't really 
make the process any easier. Okay, next let's talk about some eyeliners. So these two eyeliners are actually sent to me in PR by the brand. These are from Esquito and these are just their gel eyeliner pens. I got a brown and a black shade sent to me. These are the actual two liners and I will say they are, um, what are they called? You can, I think I must have used these up mostly because normally when you twist, oh here we go, the black twists it up a little bit, but they are twist up liners and they're actually really good. They do get messy so I will say you can see here. You can see here that the product itself gets pretty messy if you're not consistently cleaning it. But these are some of the best liners for the waterline I have ever seen. They are kind of pricey at like $16, but that's around the price of like a nice liner you would see at Sephora. And these have worked better than any liner I've picked up from Sephora or from the drugstore. For me and my waterline, what I'm looking for is something that is bright that you can see and that stays. This is the only waterline pencil I've used where at the end of a 12 hour day I come back up in my room and I look in the mirror and I still see liner in my waterline. That impressed the hell out of me. I I've never seen that. Even like with other liners that I like, it's not in my waterline at the end of a 12 hour day. But this was. So uh, because of that, I would 100% pay the $16 to actually purchase these. And I think when I actually finish them up, I will actually buy them. They come in uh, individually and then they also come in like a package set. So I'm probably just gonna buy the package set when I finish this. I want them to come out with more colors. That's another downside. They only have black and brown right now. I want this like in a bunch of colors just because of its lasting power and how bright and how like pigmented the product is. I, w I was shocked. Um, I did post about this on my Instagram a while ago, but uh, th these are just great and I really want to keep using them. I had, again, I had them in my everyday basket for so long I had to put them back into my collection so I would use other liners, but these are good. Okay, so next I have a product that I picked up a few weeks ago that I've been using for my brows, though it's not a brow product. This is from Maybelline and this is their 24 hour color tattoo and it's basically a cream shadow. Um, I got the shade Risk Maker, which is basically just their black cream shadow. And this is what I've been using just in my brows daily for your, over a month now. Uh, I've made a good dip in the actual pot here. It's essentially basically like a, a workable dupe of the ABH Dip Brow. It's, it's got kind of the same consistency, the same texture. And the only thing that I find is that sometimes you get like little flakes of like where it dries off. It looks a bit odd, but I love the color. The color is like perfect for me. I love how creamy it is. I love how smooth it is to apply and it just looks good. It stays put all day. So I've been using this in my brows and this really got me out of the rut of using black eyeshadow because I have been for like the past four or five months using nothing but black eyeshadow in my brows. And I think I did that because I liked how deep it looked in my brows. I love a good stark black brow that matches my hair. I don't like lighter brows. I think they look weird on me. I need brows. <laughs> and this has just worked so good and it's fairly affordable. I got it, I think, at either Target or CVS and I just, on a whim, I was just like, oh, they have a black one. I could try it in my brows and it worked out really well so I'm definitely going to keep using it I've been going back to it for a few weeks now and it works and I don't know how many shades they have in this color tattoo line but I would recommend it if you're looking for like a nice pigmented stark brow see if they have the shade that you want in this line and I would use this over the dip brow okay so the last makeup product that I have before we move on to hair care is a liquid shadow from CoverGirl. And I just realized most of this is like drugstore slash affordable. I think the only higher end product in here were those eyeliners, which is pretty good. So these are liquid shadows from CoverGirl and they're called the CoverGirl Exhibitionist liquid shadows. Oh, they don't have the whole name on here, but the, their shade names are just numbers. So I picked up shade one, shade two, shade four, and shade five. Let me just go ahead and swatch them for you real quick. Okay, so it might be a little hard to see in this lighting, but here are the swatches. We have shade one, shade two, shade four, and shade five. And they dry down in about 30 seconds to a minute. 
These shadows are some of the best alternatives to the Stila Glitter and Glows that I have found. My main complaint about these is that their uh, shades are pretty dark. Like you can see, even the lightest two shades are pretty dark. And part of the reason why I love the Stila shadows is because they're bright. They really brighten up a look. I can do a really dark look, but brighten up with one of those glitters all over my lid. So I've really been reaching for the two lightest shades, shade one and shade two, especially when I'm using my pan that palette. So recently, um, my go-to look has been a really kind of deep, neutral look using the top row of my pan that palette for 2020 and then using one of these all over the lid i did a tutorial on that look in my last pan that palette update so i'll throw it up in the cards if you're interested but these are just so good they last throughout a day they don't crack they don't look terrible at the end of the day which you can't really say for a lot of other affordable shadows elf but they're great and my only cons my only complaint is that i wish they had more shades they don't really have a lot of shades in this formula i hope they expand the shade range because i want this in lighter colors like i want a light peach i want a light pink i want a light silver like I, I don't like that this is like the lightest shade here but they work really good the orange is gonna get a hell of a lot of work this fall <laughs> I kind of wish I had this last fall because that would have looked really pretty. The two pink shades are just really like gorgeous and they're oh, they're just really good. They are a little pricey for the drugstore. I think they're around $13 each. That's still $10 less than the Stila's. And they do last a while. I've had all of these for a few months now. They haven't tried out yet. They're still, I'm still able to use them consistently and they work. All right, last but not least, we have the two hair care products I've really been loving for the past couple of months. The first one is from this new Head & Shoulders line that's specifically made for natural or curly hair. It's called the Royal Oils Collection. I have, basically, you'll see this, I did film a updated um, Diva Curl Free wash day routine, so that should be up before this video, so I'll throw that up in the cards. And this is part of their collection. This is the Instant Soothe Scalp Elixir with cooling menthol and peppermint oil. And I've just been using this to spray onto the tops and sides of my scalp after I wash my hair. And it does feel tingly, it feels good right after you put it on, and it just, my scalp, okay, I have to say it, like overall the health of my scalp has gotten 10 times better better since I stopped using Diva Curl. So I really can't tell whether it was just the shampoo from Diva Curl that was causing most of my scalp problems or if it's been like this product helping me more. It might be a little column A, a little column B, but I have to say my flakes have almost disappeared. I rarely itch my scalp anymore. <laughs> so I do think most of it probably was the Diva Curl shampoo fucking with my scalp, but this is just felt really good it um whenever i do feel an itchy spot on my scalp if i'm here at home or at the end of the day i'll just spray a little bit of this on the area and then rub it in and it just goes away it's just it's really good i love the nozzle the nozzle is very like concentrated so you can really get in here and spray and it smells really good it feels really good and i'm just so happy that finally finally the one thing that I've been struggling with since going curly girl was my scalp issues. I have finally gotten that under control. And next we have a product that I've been using mainly to style, I guess you would call the canopy, the top kind of layer of my hair. And that is from Mark Anthony. This is the Strictly Curls Curl Enhancing Styling Foam. <laughs> Can I read? And this is the extra hold version. I don't know if it's just this, but whatever. Um, it's like... Yeah, it's a foam, but it's got a lot of hold, like more hold than some gels. And it's very lightweight, which is why I love using it like on the top parts for my curls. For the bottom curls, I will use a bit of a heavier gel because they're on the bottom. They rub against my shirt. They rub against my backpack. They need a little bit more hold. But for the, the curls up top, I love using this. And this is also is great to refresh with. So if I just wanted to fix, instead of pinning this back, I could have refreshed these curls and used this. And they would have still looked great and they would have dried pretty fast. I noticed that this does help my hair dry a bit faster than normal. So those are all of my favorites for my first favorites video of 2020. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below what products you have been loving recently. And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.